I love the lol backpack win memes as much as anyone. But as much as you love them, they're over. The LTT store backpack is finally here. Every stitch, every zipper was painstakingly considered to make this the tech bag. And we are gonna go through absolutely everything that makes this final version of it utterly unique. And this detailed look at our first unit off the mass production line is brought to you by Shopify, who offers the easy to use all-in-one commerce platform that powers LTTstore.com, where you can put it in order for this backpack right now. Let's begin with the outside, because basically every pack that I've ever owned has failed in one of three places. Either here, here, or here. So each of those has been either double or triple reinforced to the point where we're actually gonna do a video showcasing this. You could tow a car by the handle of this backpack and it would not tear off. The top handle is triple riveted into place. The seams for the arm straps are reinforced. The bottom of the arm straps have reinforced seams and rivets so that they cannot, <clears throat> cannot come out and our size adjustments I don't know why nobody does this, are metal rather than plastic, so they will never break down. An added benefit is that the teeth are nice and sharp, so once it's in place, it will not slip! Now, I use a backpack at trade shows, and I'm a bit of a sweaty boy, so a major consideration for us was the shape and depth of the ribs on the back, so that you can actually get a little bit of airflow through, not just around your back and along your spine, but also, on the shoulder straps, because I take off my backpack at the end of the day, it's like stain, stain, stain. It's pretty nasty. One of the other ways we deviated from standard backpack designs is the spacing of the arm straps. I would often end up with chafing marks on the sides of my neck after a long day of wearing a heavy backpack. Not so with ours. We adjusted both the width and the angle so that they sit comfortably on the shoulders and don't like kind of fall back and pull back with a gap back here rather than rubbing on your neck. One of the bits of feedback we got from our first couple of prototypes was that people really wanted to see a luggage strap, but we didn't want the luggage strap to be permanent because I wanted that ventilation on the back, right? So we came up with this detachable luggage strap piece here. It's strong enough thanks to the Velcro straps that it won't fall off your bag, but if you're not into it and you don't wanna use it, all you gotta do is fold it up, actually you don't need to do quarters, into halves and it fits perfectly in the RFID blocking passport pocket. We made it deeper so that it would accommodate this because the idea was that if you're traveling, you probably have your passport in here and your luggage strap on. And if you're not traveling, you can tuck your luggage strap in here. It goes all the way across the back so that it sits centered and doesn't bother your back because it'll sit right in the small. The outer fabric is called Reprieve. It's made of recycled water bottles and it's abrasion resistant, tear resistant, as well as water resistant. It's not waterproof. I wouldn't take your bag and dunk it into water with all your valuable electronics in it. But if you get caught out in the rain, the Reprieve fabric plus our use of YKK waterproof zippers is gonna go a long way towards keeping your electronics and anything else safe and dry. Of course, standard abrasion resistance wasn't enough for a careless boy like me. I get home at the end of the day, I'm like, see you later, backpack. So, this is another point of failure I've seen before. The entire bottom of the bag is double layered. You manage to wear through this, dragging your bag around, there's a whole other layer there for you. The internal volume is 25.5 liters with a total volume of 35 liters, meaning that it fits absolutely perfectly under the seat in front of you on the airplane. And if you're the kind of person who wants to pile in even more stuff, say for example, on the webbing here, 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 and at the front, we have a removable chest strap that comes installed by default, but that can be easily taken off if you prefer to not have it. There's a little slit in here. And you just put the strap back in place, it sits like that, and then it's hidden away when you don't wanna use it. Not everybody's into that whole scene. I get it. It's a little tricky to get in, but the benefit is that it won't ever come off by accident. Oh yeah, and it has a small elastic, and that's just to make it a little bit more comfortable when you're moving around. Now's as good a time as any to mention the carabiner zipper pulls that we had custom done. Look, they got little LTTs on them and everything. The idea here was to make it a little less convenient for someone to roll up and open up your bag, or if you're like me and you have maybe like a, 
uh, a racket sticking out, or let's say you've got a battery bank that you wanna store in this pocket right here, and then cable manage up to your phone that you're charging in this pocket over here, for example. It'll allow you to have it ever so slightly open to make space for it, but not risk having your bag just casually open up. I mean, with the quality of these zippers, it's very unlikely, but every element of the design was for today and for 10 years from now. This isn't actually my typical loadout though, so let's go ahead and start filling this thing up with the kind of stuff that I would normally put in it. We'll start at the back where it's pretty typical for a backpack these days to have a laptop slot or a tablet slot or even a slot for another electronic device. But what about all three? I usually daily drive a 13.3 to 14 inch laptop and you can see it'll accommodate one of those fine, just fine. But I know that for some of you, 15.6 or even 17 is more the way you like to roll. So we made sure that we could accommodate that as well. Now, something you might notice when you get the backpack is that we don't actually have a pad at the bottom of the laptop sleeve, but that is by design. The way that all these layers of sleeving for your iPad, what the hey, something else with a screen on it, who cares, I slipped my fold in there. The way that they all get sewn together adds a natural cushion due to the way that the seams come together. So when the laptop bag gets filled, it's absorbed so it doesn't actually just hit the surface down below it. This chunky pocket right here was designed to accommodate even very large chargers. You can see that's why it goes so low. And then I really like to keep a power bank or some other kind of accessory here. One of the early considerations for the design was portable gaming handhelds, like say for example, ah, yes. It's a little bit back heavy right now because it's uh, got nothing in the front and it's completely open. Let's go ahead and put this in here. This pocket opens up nice and wide just so that you can get at the very bottom if you need to. And during the design process for this bag, Valve announced the Steam Deck, but didn't announce that they were gonna be shipping it with a carrying case. So we actually re-kajiggered the bottom down here to make it so that if you really wanted to, you could put a Steam Deck down at the bottom and we have another screen safe soft fabric panel stitched in at the bottom to make sure that it's not gonna scratch your screen. So I've got a grand total of four electronic devices in here and it's not even breaking a sweat. If you have a larger power brick, say for example, one like this for a really chunky laptop or one like this for a super extra chunky laptop. Ugh. Let's see, we did manage to get enough height clearance in here, even for that boy. Uh, you might wanna use this second pocket here for your power cable that goes into the wall. That was actually why we put it there, but that doesn't really apply to me, so I'll keep a battery bank in there and I'll just... Ah, uh, yes. The thing that delayed the backpack past the back to school season, the AirTag pocket. I was like, do we really need an AirTag pocket? And then I was like, yeah, we do. So right here inside the lower down zipper where the water bottle holder is, there's a teeny tiny lethal pocket stitched right there. It's easy enough for you to get at, but hidden away enough that if someone were to casually search your bag, it is unlikely that they would notice it there. Obviously, compatibility with our own products, our 21 ounce and 40 ounce water bottles was imperative. So we designed this elastic, stretchy water bottle holder that will keep your bottle upright in your bag and hold it securely, whether you prefer the small boy or the 40 ounce guy. Look at that. Now, I could imagine some people looking at the main compartment of this bag and thinking, gee, you guys kinda didn't put a lot of organization pockets in there. That's by design. Another one of the big challenges that I've had with other bags that I've owned in the past is that there was nowhere to put really bulky stuff. I often use my bag as an overnight bag or even a two night bag. So I wanna be able to put in a couple pairs of boxers, couple pairs of socks, pair of pants or two, couple t-shirts and having somewhere where you can just kind of pack everything in where it doesn't impede your ability to access all of the other organizational pockets in the bag is freaking awesome. That was two beach towels and a hoodie and I'm not even close to done yet. Got my iFixit kit. Let's throw in a mouse pad, also from lttstore.com. Call this the compartment of holding. That's what it does. Let's put some strain on these zippers. Show these folks how it's done. Do we have a scale? Okay, we're up to 23 pounds. Not bad, but we can do better. 
Unfortunately, not all of my devices are USB type C yet. So one of the things that I like to keep in this side pocket here is a USB micro B charging cable for my G Pro wireless super light. Go ahead and pack that in there. And then we make our way around to the front. The sunglass holder is something we agonized over. If we had gone with a super hard plastic shell on the inside liner, then obviously it would offer the best protection, but it would take away from the internal volume of our pocket of holding, and it would be a little bit harder to get things in and out of it. Oh shoot, I missed something in the bag of holding. Right, there's like a, an organizational pocket of holding there too, just a nice big one. Anything I like to have quick access to, like my two and a half gig network adapter, my USB-C to type A, the water cooling fitting I use when I'm desperate, business cards, and my type C uh, dongle. There we go, sorry, sorry. Back to the sunglass holder. If we went too soft, well, you'd risk crush damage to your glasses just from having the bag full. So what we settled on was this film. It's like a stiff film that goes under the super soft liner. So you can put them in in whatever way works best for the natural shape of your glasses. Mine actually seemed to cooperate best, just kind of looking up at me a little bit, something like that. And then let's uh, put some more strain on our zippers here, shall we? Our last pocket is the one that we probably made the most revisions to over the course of finishing up the design. This is a really funny one. Keeping with our philosophy that all of our products should work well together, we extended this pocket and shortened this one to ensure that there would be a place to put our screwdriver. But then we realized that if you were to put something like an SSD in there, unless you have the world's tiniest hands, you'd have absolutely no hope whatsoever of retrieving it. So we added a little zipper. <laughs> Make sure you can get stuff out of the bottom of this pocket if you want to. But really what it's for is a tool like a screwdriver, which will also be available soon. I like using this one for thumb drives, uh, SSDs, anything that I wanna keep nice and safe. This is where my little light goes. Put my headphones and my Jerry Rig Everything knife right here. Nice, easy access to those. And then this one, boy, did we ever debate this guy. We were thinking, of doing this as a uh, three-way zipper this way. So it would fold down like this. The nice thing about that approach would have been that you would just take these, put them halfway down and kind of flap it open. So the drawback of the way we did it is that if you've got a lot of weight in here, it can kind of sag. But the advantage of this way is that you will never accidentally dump the contents out. So we settled on going this way and I'll show you how I like to use it. So I've got like, you know, some extra paper towels and masks, my side cutters, some pliers. And the way that I typically use it is like this. I'll just open it up like halfway along the bottom and that way I can access everything inside this pocket, everything in here, and it doesn't sag even with all that weight on it. 25 and a half pounds. That's a lot of weight. But what's really cool is that all the time and thought that we put into the positioning of the straps, the angle, the shape of the back panel, it's already paying off because at the pop-up shop we did where we sold the first 50 units of the bag, we had people show up with their existing backpack full of heavy stuff, load it all into the LTT backpack, and they were like, huh, it's actually not as hard to carry anymore. And you can see that in the reviews on the site. Oh, Andy asked me to make this joke. It's, it's so big it can store a car. Ha 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 ha. Oh, right. Uh, this webbing on the front, this was from a shoot. I needed to carry a walkie talkie and I needed to use my hands. I was like, there's nowhere to put a walkie talkie on the front of this bag. Thankfully, make my own bag. So this is so you can put a walkie talkie or uh, some kind of navigation instrument or whatever the case may be. If you want to take it out for a day pack, go on a hike or something like that. Want to try the fully loaded one, Bell? Ooh. Don't oversell it. No, the padding on this is super nice though. So the key with padding is not how thick it is, it's actually how firm it is. The early samples that we got used a really thick but really squishy padding. And what happens with a squishy padding is that you go through it and then there's no padding. So that's why counterintuitively, the padding on the arm straps is actually like really hard to compress. It's a lot of freaking weight in here, but we passed all the durability tests that we submitted to third parties with absolutely flying colors. It's a super, super durable bag, and you can buy yours on lttstore.com.
Massive shout out to Shopify. They've been a great partner through all of this. I have no idea what the talking points are, but we use Shopify to A, build our site, B, monitor all of our analytics, C, run things like the pop-up shop. They have physical hardware so that you can take payment in person. Uh, you don't just have to use them as an e-commerce platform. And they've been absolutely instrumental in helping us get products like this, the screwdriver, t-shirts, whatever else it is to market. So shout out Shopify for sponsoring the video. And uh, yeah, let's, let's keep working together, boys our Canadian bros. If you're curious about starting a business, you can try Shopify for 14 days for free at shopify.com slash short circuit. I'm gonna pull out everything we put in this bag and a couple of other things that I slipped in. That's a big towel. Oh, did I say there were two towels in before? It was one. And yes, you air tag, see? Totally forgot about it, the system works. Here it is. Going to the beach, going away for a couple days, yeah. I think this has got you covered. Subscribe to Short Circuit.